200 years ago, uh, Laplace invented a really clever system to solve differential equations. And the, the idea is to start out with functions whose derivatives would be taken, first, second, third derivatives, and so forth, are going to be taken, uh, with respect to a variable t, say. Uh, t always, to me, means time. And it's sort of traditional we use t. So you have functions. You can think of them as time. The theory gets applied a lot in waveform analysis. So f of t might be cosine omega t plus sine omega t, something like that, a waveform. But it can be anything. But this is sort of a, a way to visualize it a little more clearly. So we have functions with respect to this variable t. And we do something to them called Laplace transforming them. And then we have a companion function, capital F, of the different variable s. And then if f of t is involved in a differential equation, in some complicated differential equation, what happens is there is a corresponding algebraic equation in the capital F space. And to solve the differential equation, it suffices to solve the algebraic equation in the capital F space, and then transform back. Called inverse Laplace. Right, in, an inverse Laplace transform. And, and that gives you the solution to the, uh, the Diffie Q. Now, I saw all of this stuff before, because we did electrical engineering, but I have forgotten. Yeah, well, it's the electrical engineers love this stuff. And we'll do problems that involve circuits, and that's exactly what it's good for. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good for mechanical engineering problems, structural engineering problems, and electrical engineering problems. Um, so the, the engineers, I'm not sure where the engineers get it around here. Um, no, 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 I mean, the, the engineers at this school, I don't know when they're exposed to this. It is being taught now, if you give In 2402? Yeah. Uh, they said it, it was just like once over a lightning. Well, I don't know how in depth they go. But yeah, but I mean, you don't have a lot of time to do it. I thought they were going to look at options if you do it. They didn't even touch them. No, there's no. no chapter that skipped over. They're probably doing it a little bit in, in 2402 at the behest of the engineers. But what I'd like to do is really, really go into it in some detail. So that's the happy theory. Differential equation transformed to an algebraic dual space, solve it algebraically, transform back to the solution of the differential equation. And here's what a Laplace transform. I mean, there are many transforms in life. There's Laplace transforms, there's Fourier transforms, there's Mellon transforms, this, that, and the other thing. And usually uh, the Laplace transform falls in the category of an integral transform. So the transformation is defined by an integration. So if I start out with a function, aren't the Fourier transforms also integral transforms? Sine and cosine. I thought I was, did I just not say that? No, you said the plots were integral transforms. And then did I say Fourier and Mellon? Mellon? No. Oh. I'll write it down. No, for, see, Fourier transforms, I, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> These are the big three. Yeah. And the Laplace transform is this. I have my function f of t, which is involved in a differential equation. And I'm going to multiply it by what you can regard as a, an extinction factor or a damping factor. For large values of s, what does e to the minus st look like for a fixed t? It looks, starts to look like 0. So for values far away from the s origin, in s space, uh, this product is small, right, for a fixed t. And I integrate that with respect to t. So away go all the t's. This t will be gone, that t will be gone, and the result will be a function of s, capital F of s, and my domain of integration is from the origin to plus infinity. So that's the basic definition.
we write for shorthand script L, like the British pound sign without the line through it, script L of FT. And if you want to be really trendy, you can even write this. And you'd know what you meant there as long as you have uh, the context is clear. Right now. Okay. So what I suggest we do is develop a list. This is how we teach calculus. We, we define a derivative and then we do apply the definition to various functions and get their derivatives and then we start using them in problems. Let's take the same tack with this. Let's get the Laplace transforms of some simple functions and then use them in simple differentiate, differential equation problems to see how it works. Because if we jump right in now and try to solve a particular problem, we're going to need some Laplace transforms to work with anyway. We might as well start working on a list. And we'll develop a list. We'll have an F of T column and a capital F of S column. And it's like integration and differentiation in that if you go one way, it's the transform. And if you go the other way, it's the inverse transform. So it's two for the price of one. Okay? Can we point out from the definition of what the Laplace transform is that it's a linear operator? That's one of the theorems we'll prove. Okay. The very first order of business is to is to think about sufficient conditions for the existence of the transform. In this business, it's possible to uh, to have a transform that doesn't meet the or have a function that doesn't meet the sufficiency conditions, but miraculously it still has a transform. So the sufficient conditions are overdetermined. They're more than necessary. But, but that this often happens. It happens with, uh, with Fourier uh, transforms as well. One of the big unanswered questions of the 19th century, which led ultimately to set theory, oddly, uh, people, people wanted to know what, how bad could a function be to still have a Fourier transform? In other words, to express it as a sum of coefficients times sines and cosines at various angles, you know, with expansion in terms of uh, sines and cosines. And uh, nobody really knew the answer to that. And uh, Georg Cantor started working on that problem. I think it was his PhD dissertation in 1873, where he developed some conditions. And in considering the, the cardinality of the point set upon which the Fourier transform didn't work, he was led to considering the sizes of infinities, you know, the various sizes of infinities, and that, of course, got a null when I said to him. But it was, it was a, uh, a consideration, basically, of, of uh, the applicability of Fourier theory that, that led the set theory back in the 1870s. And then there, it, there's some open questions that have only been recently resolved about the uh, Fourier series as well. I mean, maybe within the last 20 years. Sort of but anyway, this is Laplace theory, and, and this is, uh, I think, I think this is a somewhat more stable, well-known, earlier established theory. It's pretty cut and dry. We like cut and dry stuff. This is like the quadratic formula on steroids. You know, it's, it's, it just works. <laughs> it works. Right. Alex Rodriguez, yes, bless this. <laughs> okay, 